when I was still a young boy, it was my mother that used to buy clothes for me. She would go to town and buy for me the shirts, the trousers, and then just bring for me at home and I put on. Of course, when I grew older, it was my turn to start doing my shopping myself. And I remember my, the first time I shopped for myself was when I was around 15 years old. In my first experiences, as I was going shopping, I would go get into a shop. I look at these shirts and I bring them home. But there were these shirts that I liked. There are these shirts that were always wrapped in boxes. The problem with those shirts is that you cannot first try them to see if they fit you. You just have to know your size. You look at the shirt and just take it home and put it on. Now, with me, I had it happened a lot for me that I would just go look at a shirt look at it, estimate that it will fit me, and then I'll just buy it in the box without even trying it on. I get home and upon putting it on when I'm at home, I realize that the shirt is oversized. And of course, whenever I found that the shirt is oversized, my first instinct would be to take it back so that, you know, they give me a shirt that actually fits me. But in most cases, these were shops that were in town and by then I lived very far away from town. So the next best option for me was to take them to a local tailor who was normally somebody that was nearby to trim them so that they fit me. And I did this a lot until I gave up on buying shirts in boxes. I don't know. For some reason, whenever I buy a shirt that is in a box, it's always having an issue. It either does not fit me or when it fits me, I just don't like how it looks when it's on my body. Yet the shirt actually looked very nice when it was inside that box. Now, how does this have to do with the topic I'm going to talk about today? That is adjustments of final accounts. Well, it has everything to do with it. Because just like when I buy a shirt and I find that it is oversized and then decide that it should be trimmed so that it fits my size. And so are financial statements. Sometimes we need to trim these financial statements so that they fit the period that we are looking at. This is what I mean. Now, when it comes to accounting, uh, of course, there are four financial statements. And like I have mentioned earlier, financial statements are prepared so that they communicate the information or they tell a story on the affairs of a business. So when it comes to these financial statements, I'll, let me talk about these two. There's what we call the balance sheet, which is called the, you know, the statement of financial position. And then there's what we call the income statement or what you call the trading profit and loss account or what you call the statement of comprehensive income. It's the statement of comprehensive income that lets us know whether a business has made a profit or a loss in a specific period. A balance sheet, or call it the statement of financial position, is simply going to show you the assets, the liabilities, and the equity of, a, of an entity. What I'm trying to say is that when it comes to the balance sheet, if we are preparing statements for this period, the closing balances in the balance sheet will become opening balances in the next trading period. So it means that when it comes to a balance sheet, what closes this period will be the continuation in the next trading period. But that is not so with the income statement. And in the income statement here, we are reflecting revenues and expenses. Now, when it comes to revenues and expenses, the revenues and expenses are to reflect a specific period of time. So it means that when we are preparing financial statements, when it comes to the income statement, or call it the statement of comprehensive income, those sales that you see or the revenue and the expenses that you see in the statement of comprehensive income, those ones reflect that specific trading period. And so it means that when it comes to the income statement, there is no such thing as we are carrying forward figures to the next trading period. It means if it is an expense for that period, that is the expense for that 12 month period and that expense actually is supposed to be closed off for that period and it means in the next trading period as far as the ledger accounts are concerned there is not going to be an opening balance for expenses that's not going to happen so it means that in an ideal world 
when we are preparing that uh, the statement of comprehensive income, it means that if it is revenue, it is supposed to be revenue that has been earned in that trading period. If it is expenses, it means it is supposed to be the expenses that were incurred in that trading period. And when I'm talking about trading period, I am referring to the 12 months period that the financial statements relate to. But in reality, that is not always the case. Sometimes we, let's say, right now I'm making this video in 2021. So if, say, I have a business and by December 2021, the uh, accounts I'm preparing are supposed to be reflecting from January to December of 2021, maybe along my business I paid excess rent. I paid rent and the rent that I paid is ref maybe I paid in advance and I reflect part of the money that I paid for rent to my landlord is covering maybe the next uh, some three months in the next year. Well, at the time I was paying that rent, I recorded it in my books. And so in my books, it indicates that I've paid really this much rent, but part of that rent is spilling over to the next financial year. So that means that as far as my books are concerned, the rent account is oversized, just like the way my shirt was. And because it is oversized, I need to trim that rent account so that it fits, it reflects rent up to December. 2021. 20, the same can be true for revenue. Well, maybe there is a client of mine or a customer that pays me money. He has paid me money for offering a good or a service that I'm supposed to be offering in the future. Like I was saying, I am in 2021. Let's say by um, I've been I've received money to offer goods or a service that I'm supposed to execute in 2022. That means that that money that I have received does not apply to the trading period ending 2021. And so it means that in my books, I have recognized revenue that I have received, but I have not yet earned it. It's not, it does not relate to this financial period of 2021. So that means that the revenue account in my books is also oversized just like my shirt, my shirt was. And because it is oversized, I need to trim it. I need to eliminate that income that relates to the next trading period so that in my books, I only report income that relates to the 12 months period ending 2021. Now, what I have tried to show you here is consistent with the, co uh, with the concept in accounting we call the, the matching concept. Now, the matching concept simply states, or it seeks to illustrate this, that when you're making revenue, the revenue you make should be matched against the expenses that were incurred to help you earn that revenue. So that is the matching concept. So meaning that if I am preparing financial statements for a 12 months period ending December 2021, it means my revenues and my expenses are supposed to be matching. By matching, again, I mean that the expenses that I am going to reflect in my financial statements should be the expenses that we are used to generate that revenue. And so that is the trimming I'm talking about. In case I paid excess rent, maybe I paid for some months in 2022, it means that those that extra rent for those months of the next year are supposed to be trimmed off. And same with the revenue. I've earned revenue throughout this year, ending 2021, December. If I've received any cash that is meant for work for next year that I have not yet done, I need to trim it. So now when we trim this, when, when we eliminate it, where do we put it? Of course, when we eliminate such we put it in the balance sheet. In other words, remember I said the balance sheet, for it it reflects balances from when the business started, meaning that with the balance sheet, or we'll call it the statement of financial position, the closing balances for assets for this period will be the opening balances for the next period. That is not the case with the income statement. So it means that what happens is that if I have paid excess rent, 
that excess rent of next year i'm going to cut it off first take it to the balance sheet or in other words the balance sheet holds it temporarily then in the future trading periods then that rent that i held temporarily can then be released back to the income statement to whenever it's appropriate of course i'm going to cover those details one by one a bit later on so the main issue here to pick is that when we are doing adjustments like this we are trying to be consistent with the matching principle which says that expenses that have been incurred are supposed to be matched against the revenues that for which they helped generate because remember expenses are the costs used up in the process of making business or if i may put it in another way expenses are the costs that help to generate that revenue so that is when things are excess so the same logic is true even when we are dealing with rent that has been incurred but has not yet been paid if you think about it yes i have been in my business i've not paid rent for six months this rent has been incurred but it has not yet been paid so because it has not yet been paid there is nothing in the books of accounts that reflects that this rent has been paid so it means that our rent account is undercast or it is smaller and so it needs to be adjusted so where do we get the thing to fill up there again we are going to get it from the balance sheet and fill up the rent account to there i'll explain that in a while the same thing is for revenue i have incurred I have earned revenue but it has not yet been paid so in the adjustments it means that i am supposed to adjust the revenue account to recognize that revenue that i earned though has not yet been paid and how do we do that it means that we are going to get that from the balance sheet and you know top up so in a nutshell this is what i'm trying to say that when we are adjusting accounts we are trying to just like when I was talking about my shirt that does not fit me, in my case, my shirt was big. And because it was big, I take it to the tailor and the tailor adjusts it to fit my size. So when it comes to the income statement, this is what is happening. When it comes to revenue accounts and expense accounts, because of the affairs of our accounts, some accounts are oversized and they need to be trimmed. When they are trimmed downwards, that excess that we've trimmed off is taken to the balance sheet also if a revenue or an expense account is undersized or it is small it means we need to fill it up so that it is to the right size where do we get the stuff that we use to fill it up so that it's to the right size we get that from the balance sheet so in other words when it comes to the balance sheet or what you call the statement of financial position it is going to remove the excess hold it so as it's waiting to release it in the future accounting period whenever it's appropriate and also at the same time it is also the other way around uh, in case there is something inadequate in the income statement we get something from the balance sheet and fill it if it is still confusing you don't worry i'm going to go over it one by one and all this will become very clear i'll be breaking this down in a while my name is Arnold. This is Kisembo Academy. So let's get to it.